Here we are and we're going to be discussing applications of quadratic functions, a more advanced approach. If a baseball is projected upward from ground level with an initial velocity of 96 feet per second, then its height is a function of time. That is, as time goes by, it gets higher and then lower. Given by this function, s for distance equals negative 16 t squared plus 96 t. What is the maximum height reached? Note, this is a quadratic. The leading term is negative. You're going to have a cupped down parabola. You're looking for the maximum height. That's K. The amount of time it takes is H. The amount of time it takes to reach the maximum height is H. And K is the maximum height reached. So let us go there. What is the maximum height reached? Well, first we find H, then we find K. So H equals negative B over 2A. You have to know what H is first, as you'll see. All right, we have S equals negative 16 T squared plus 96 T. We could pull out a, a GCF, but there's no reason to bother. Let's go nine, negative 96 over two times negative 16, which is negative 96 over negative 32. Let us pull up the calculator. Okay, 96 divided by 32. Three, my goodness, who would have thunk it? So, negative over negative is positive. 32 goes into 96 three times. It's going to take three seconds for the ball to reach its highest point. Well, they're not asking for that, of course. What we're looking for is K. K is what we get when we put three in for T. So negative 16 times three squared plus 96 times three. And so again, we pull out the calculator negative 16 times 3 squared plus 96 times 3. 144 feet high, which indeed is the answer. I left the answers in there just so we all could be sure. that we're correct, although my math lab is not correct 100% of the time. Keep that in mind. Still, it's nice to agree with their answer. So here we are. What is the maximum height reached by the ball? 144 feet, and then it starts to go down. Next problem. A toy rocket is shot vertically into the air from a launching pad nine feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 64 feet per second. The height, h in feet, 
of the rocket above the ground at T seconds after launch is given by this function. Now you have a quadratic trinomial. Again, the leading term is negative, so you have a cupped down parabola. But remember that the launch, the launch pad is nine feet. So the toy rocket starts here. And then it lands on the ground. How long will it take the rocket to reach its maximum height? And what is the maximum height? The vertex is H K. H is in the X coordinate position and K is in the Y coordinate position. And note which variable is acting like an X. It's T. So the time it takes the rocket to reach its maximum height is going to be H. And the maximum height is K. So for this question, the rocket reaches its maximum height after, of course, we don't really know the answer yet. This is going to be H equals negative b over 2a. And this is going to be, I should say h, shouldn't I? h, no. Oh, it is h, isn't it? How unfortunate. Okay, well, never mind then. k is going to equal negative 16 times h squared plus 64h plus 9, where h is the number we're going to find up here. And if my math lab is correct and we're correct, the answer will be 2. So let us proceed. Negative 16 is A, and 64 is B. So H equals negative B over 2A. That's going to be negative 64 over 2 times negative 16, which will be negative 64 over negative 32 which will be, oh, what a shock, two. Two times two is four, two times three is six. That's how you get 64. H is two seconds. We then take the formula and put in the H number for T, or for H as we've rewritten it here. Negative 16 times 2 squared plus 64 times 2 plus 9 equals negative 16 times 4 plus 128 plus 9. This is negative 64 plus 128, for those who want to do it by hand, you can certainly do it by hand, plus 9. Negative 64 plus 128 is positive 64, plus 9, which is going to be 73. 73 feet. That is K. And K is the maximum height reached. Notice that in both of these problems, we're finding the vertex of a cup down parabola.
Now this is a little more complicated. Let me make sure that indeed I am recording. Yes, I'm recording and yes, my microphone and video are on. We are happy creatures. Okay, you can see I've already started this. Look at that. You're going to fold this eight by 12 inch, um, what is this? A one compartment vertical file is to be constructed by bending the long side of an eight by 12 sheet of plastic. Okay, along two lines to form a U shape. And there it is. Where we have three sides, this side, this side, and this side. This side and this side are both X, and this side is called Y, because I certainly am not assume that three sides are equal. So that means, since we're, we're folding along the, uh, the long side, we're folding it up. Um, X plus X plus Y are going to equal 12. So 2X plus Y equals 12. That's how long this is. And solving for Y, because we'll need to have X's if we want to solve, or if we want to get, well, you'll see, you'll see. We need to get Y in terms of X, and so if I subtract 2X from both sides, what I'll get is Y equals 12 minus 2X. And I don't know what that L is doing over there. Let me try to erase it. Very good. All right, so here we are, volume. Yes, we need to read this. A one compartment vertical file is to be constructed by bending the long side of an eight by eight inch by 12 inch sheet of plastic along two lines to form a U. How tall should the file be to maximize the volume that it can hold? Well, volume equals length times width and we see the answer there, but you're not supposed to know the answer. Well, I'm letting Y be the width and X be the height, and this length is eight, as you can see right there. So the length is eight, the width is Y, and the height is X. And Y, is 12 minus 2x. So this is going to give us 8 times x times y, times x times y, this is y. And now I'm going to distribute the 8x. V equals, all right, 8 times 12 is 96, 96x, 8x times 12 is 96x, minus, 8x times 2x is 16x squared. So the volume is going to equal negative 16x squared plus 96x. All right, we have a cup down parabola. So we are trying to find the maximum volume. All right, so A, well, let's see, we shouldn't be doing that. A, A is negative 16 and B is 96. So H, is negative B over 2A, is negative 96 over 2 times negative 16. We have been here before, haven't we? 
is negative 96, and I hear my dog coming in. Come on, Ava. There she is. Yes, yeah, she's my girl. Negative 96 over negative 32, so that equals 3. But what are we trying to do? How tall should the file be in order to maximize the volume? Now, if we wanted to find out, well, what is the maximum volume? Now that I know what X is, it's three feet, three feet, three inches. Good grief. That would be a really big file. We'll just leave it three. Um, I could find out that side. And I could find out what the maximum volume is, but they're not asking that at all. They're asking how tall should the file be to maximize the volume? Um, so as a result, it's quite enough to find H, which is three. It was also the easiest thing to do. Who would have thought that something that looks this hard would have such an easy answer. Notice that you could not assume that Y is the same size as that and that. Okay, we're gonna have three plus three is six. This is going to be six inches wide. That's, that's not great. That's not great. We really need another version that's more true to form, but oh well. We did it anyway. You see, it's the volume of the box is controlled by how high we make the sides. And it's quite amazing to me that three would be the answer, but it is. Now, Aki's bicycle designs has determined that when X hundred of bicycles are built, the average cost per bicycle, not the cost to us, but the cost to Aki to make the bicycles. The average cost per bicycle is given by C of X equals 0.1 x squared minus 0.3 x plus 2.566. Now this is very close to what a real life cost function would look like with a lot of decimals. Real life is not pretty. Okay, and it says where C of x is in hundreds of dollars. And the bicycles x are are in hundreds of bicycles so we will have to remember that now how here's the question we have to answer given that data how many bicycles what color should we make that let's make it orange how many bicycles should the shop build to minimize the average cost per bicycle? That's a different question. Let's look. The cost in hundreds of dollars and hundreds of bicycles is 0 0.1 x squared minus 0 0.3 x plus 2.566. This leading term is positive. Therefore, this, if when it's graphed, will be a cupped up parabola. Not drawn terribly well because I drew it. 
But here's the vertex. We'll make it a really big vertex. Here's the vertex, HK. And since it's the lowest point on the parabola, it's going to be a minimum point. And K is going to be the minimum cost. But that's not what's being asked. We're not being asked, what is the minimum cost? No, no. We are being asked, how many bicycles should Aki make? That's H. If, if Aki makes that many bicycles, Aki will have this kind of minimum cost. We'll be able to minimize uh, the cost of the company. Okay, so let's do this thing. We're going to find H, and that's all there is to it. Except we have to remember that if the answer is X equals 1, that's 100. Okay, if X equals 2, it's 200. So here we go. A, point 0.1, and B is negative 0 0.3, and H is negative B over 2A. So we have negative, negative 0 0.3 over 2 times 0 0.1. Negative, negative 0 0.3 is positive 0 0.3 over 0 0.2. Let us, well that's going to be 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So he should make half, uh, he or she or they should make one and a half bicycles. Very easy. No, probably not. I don't want to get the half bicycle. No, 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 this is 1.5. The number of bicycles is going to be 1.5 times 100, which will be 150. Bicycles. Then the cost, B I C Y, yeah, C L E S. The cost will be minimized. And notice they haven't asked what the cost is. Could we find it? Heck yes. All I have to do is put 1.5 in for every X, and I could actually actually find out what their minimum cost is, cost to the company. Okay. Profit for all of you business majors, Aki, and now this problem. The profit of a company in dollars is the difference between the co company's revenue and the company's cost. The cost, C of X, and the revenue, R of X, are functions for a particular company. The X represents the number of items produced and sold to distributors. Determine the maximum profit of the company. The maximum profit, well, has got to come from the profit, so we are going to have to calculate the profit. We're not given the profit, we're given the revenue and the cost, but thank goodness we know that profit equals revenue minus cost. So, 870x minus x squared 
minus, oh, I better do that. There's the revenue minus the cost, 2200 plus 70X. That's what the profit is. That's what we're going to calculate. That is, that's what the profit function is. We have to have that before we do anything else. So the profit is going to equal 870x minus x squared minus 2200 plus 70x. It's going to equal 870x minus x squared minus 2200. Now, I distributed this. That was positive 2200. Now it's negative 2200. And distribute negative times positive is negative 70x. So I'm going to combine like terms and these two x terms, linear terms, are the same uh, kind of term. So 870x minus 70x is 800x. However, I want to write this in descending form. 70x, 70x minus 200. So that's a minus one right there. Now, now that we have the profit function, that is too long, it's really bothering me. There, much better. If we're determining the maximum profit, then we must have a negative first term on our profit. Yes, because if we graph it, we will have an inverted parabola, a cup down parabola, and the vertex will give us our maximum. So first we need to know H, and then we can find K. Now before we go on, let's read B. Determine the number of items that must be produced and sold in order to obtain a maximum profit. Well, that's what H is. So even though H is the second question, the first question we need to find is H. So H equals negative B over 2A equals negative 800 over 2 times negative 1 equals negative 800 over negative 2, which is positive 400 items. items produced and sold, which agrees with our answer right here. The number of items that must be produced and sold to obtain the maximum profit. I'm going to write equals H. Now this is going to be K. So let's look at how we find K. We take our H number. OK, so K is going to equal. Negative one. Times 400 squared, ooh. Plus 800 times 400. Minus 
2200. And that definitely calls for a calculator. Although I have to make it smaller, I believe. Yeah, okay, so. Don't give me a hard time. Okay, so negative one, parentheses, 400, parentheses closed squared, plus 800 times 400, 800 times 400, parentheses, 400, minus 2200. Enter. 157,800, $157,000, no, $157,800 is what the maximum profit we have made the most we're going to make under the given circumstances right now under current circumstances let me pull this out and increase the size so that you can see it and perhaps write it down if you're doing that with your notes So, here we have our answers. You must remember, profit is revenue. The money you take in is revenue, minus the cost, the money that you, as the business owner, the entrepreneur, the money you have to pay out in order to buy the stuff you need, in order to pay the mortgage on a place where you can manufacture or whatever it is you're doing, you're going to have costs. And hopefully your revenue will be greater than your cost, so you will have a profit. Here's hoping. This math could actually help you. I hate this problem. OK, there is a version of this problem in every college algebra book in the world. Uh, it makes sense. You know, the, there's a version when I was taking taking college algebra. Um, you had a barn and you had the three sides of a garden against the barn, right? I mean, coming out from the barn so that the barn formed the fourth side. That made complete sense to me. But having a rancher who's silly enough to think that because he's got a river, or she has a river, forming one side of the, um, uh, of the sheep and cattle pens, that that means that a sheep bah, or cattle, more likely cattle, won't just kind of step around and out and go for a little adventure. But as you'll see, this is what the rancher is doing. A rancher needs to enclose two adjacent rectangular corrals, one for cattle and one for sheep. If the river forms one side of the corrals and 150 yards of fencing is available, find the largest total area that can be enclosed. Okay. So 
this person wants to maximize their area where the sheep and the cattle live. Well, OK, and we're told how much fencing we have. Now, what will that fencing make? It will make this side and this side and this side and the length L. So 150, 150 yards of fencing is going to equal X plus X plus X plus L. So 150 equals 3X plus L. OK, that doesn't tell me much at all. However, if you finish reading again, it says find the largest total area, not perimeter, area, the largest total area. That can be enclosed with that amount of fencing. If you use the river as one side of the corrals. So all I need to find the area of a rectangle is this formula, the length times the width. But I'll have L times, well, golly, the areas, we don't know what the area is, we want to maximize it. But the width is just X, or, or the, the, the width, yeah, is just X. And the length I'm going to have to solve for. Okay, well, if I subtract 3X from both sides, Three X minus three X is zero. I'll have one fifty minus three X equals zero plus L, which is L. So L is going to equal one fifty minus three X. So we'll put that right here. That's the length, 150 minus 3x. So that's a minus sign. OK, so a equals 150x. Oh, we're going to distribute backwards. 150x minus 3x squared, which equals going in the right direction, going downhill, descending order, negative 3x squared plus 150x. This is a quadratic function, and the leading term is negative, which means we have a cup down parabola, which means we need a maximum. So everything is going in our favor. Well, we're actually looking for the largest total area. But there are actually two ways we can find it. So let's go ahead and find it. We need H first. That is, we need the the width, the X, that will make the area a maximum. It will be the size of X. So A is negative 3, and B is 150. So H equals negative, 
ne yeah, negative B, negative 150 over two times negative three. So that's going to be negative 150 over negative six. Well, hmm, okay, whatever. Have faith, Barbara, keep going. I'm looking for my calculator, there it is. We're going to have negative 150 divided by negative six. And we have 25. So our H is going to be 25. That's what X needs to be. Now, there are two ways that we can do this, that we can actually find the maximum area. One way, the way that is probably expected is that you would say, okay, the max area is going to be the area we get when we use 25. So 150 times 25, oops, I'm using that, let's use this. Um, negative three times 25 squared plus 150 times 25. And getting out the calculator and reducing the size, moving it over here. Okay. Now, negative three, parentheses, 25, parentheses closed squared, plus 150, parentheses, 25, parentheses closed. Enter. And there you go, negative three times 25 squared, plus 150, times 25 equals 1875 square yards, right? It's in yards. Let's see. Yes, woohoo. There we go, this is yards. So the area 1875 is going to be square yards. One of the hardest problems I had when I was a college algebra student in max and min problems was trying to figure out what is H and what is K. And so I had to spend a lot of time thinking about it. The H is in the X position and the K is in the Y position. So in particular, the H is going to be the X that will maximize the K if you have a situation like this. So what is the other way to find the area? Well, if you know that X is going to be 25, X is the width, so that'll be 25, and then L, L is 150 minus 3X. X is 25, so that's going to be 3 times 25. So that'll be 150 minus 75. which is 75. So now let's multiply the, the length 75 times the width 
25 and see if we get the right answer. We might not, in which will I will be terribly embarrassed. Um, so what am I doing? 25 times 75. 25 times 75. Same answer. <laughs> Let me make it bigger for you. Okay. Let's save this before anything terrible happens. Now, I had to make sure I added another page. I worked this for the first time last night. And it is a truly different kind of problem. So what we have here is 34 inches. Is that what we have? 34 inches of string and it's cut into two pieces. One piece is used to form a circle. And the other is used to form a square. So that means this part of the string will form the circumference of the circle, the outside of the circle. And this piece of string will will the bleh, will form the perimeter of the square. And you see how the string is put together to find to uh, form a circle and how this string is put together to form a square. Now, how should, let us find, yeah, how should the string be cut so that the sum of the areas is a minimum? the sums of the areas. What that means is that the area of the circle and the area of the square, when you add them together, will be a minimum the smallest possible. Now that's not what I would usually expect. Usually I would expect them to say, oh, I want the biggest circle and the biggest square, but they don't. How should the string be cut so that the sum of the areas is a minimum? Okay. If that's what they want. So we're going to have to remember, or I'll help you remember, some formulas. And let's divide this page into halves, the circle part, and the square part. And I'm going to put a line down the middle. And then I'm going to save. Okay. I could still get rid of it accidentally. That happened last night too. All right, let's look at some formulas. Ooh. I need to change to my writing tool and get a sip of coffee.
The circumference of a circle, that is the outside line that forms the circle. Stop it, stop it. Oh. There and there. Okay, now. The circumference of a circle equals 2 pi r. 2 times pi times r. Now let me show you r. Pi is just a number. Well, I need to erase the word area so you can see this. I'll put it back. But right now, if you can find the center, the exact center of this circle, then the line going from the center to the edge is R. And R is the radius. Okay. Now, I still need to put the word area back, so A, R, E, A. So I should write it here too. R equals the radius of the circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared <clears throat> squared now over here we have we have the same kinds of formulas for a square squares are rectangles that are equal on all their sides equally long on all their sides all right so the perimeter of a square is for S, where S is side. Length of side, let's write that. Length of side. There are four sides that are all equal. And that's the perimeter, the area of a square. Since all its sides are equal. S squared. So. We now have to do some conversions. Okay, X is what is forming the circumference of the circle. So instead of the letter C, I'm going to use the letter X. Well, to figure out the area, pi is just a number, weird looking number, but a number. I need to find r is in terms of x because notice this. The perimeter is given as 34 minus x. So that's the length all the way around the square. So instead of P equals 4S, I'm going to have 34 minus X equals 4S. I'm going to have to, if I want to add this and this, I'm going to have to get them to be in the same letter. So here is my plan. I'm going to divide both sides by four over here.
so that 34 minus x over 4 is what each side of the square equals. Which means that the area of the square which is s squared, since s equals 34 minus x, oops, over 4, this is going to be parentheses 34 minus x over 4 squared. Now, back over here, I need to solve for r, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. So the 2 pi's cancel here, and what I get as a result is that r equals x over 2 pi. That means that the area of the circle is pi r squared, since r is x over 2 pi, that will be x over 2 pi squared. And what we're going to be looking for, which perhaps sounds easier than it is, is we're going to add this. Ah. We're going to add, it's doing it again. It's just trying to drive me crazy. I refuse. We're going to add these two areas together and find a minimum. Okay, well, let's get started and try to simplify these as much as possible. Um, let's look at pi times parentheses x over 2 pi squared. The same thing as pi over 1 times x squared over 4 times pi squared. So that will be pi over 1. Well, actually, I could go ahead and multiply them, couldn't I? Let's do that. I'll have pi, pi, times x squared over 1 times 4 pi squared, which is 4 times pi times pi, right? Pi times pi is pi squared. So this pi and that pi will cancel. Leaving me with x squared over 4 pi. 
That's the area of the circle. The area of the circle. I'm just going to say area circle. Is X squared over 4 pi. OK, we've taken care of that. And I've solved so far, not solved, saved so far. Let's take a look at this. The area of the square, area square, area square, area of square. is going to be 34 minus x quantity squared over 16. I need some more coffee. <clears throat> okay, let's work this out a little bit. This is going to be, okay, the area area of square I don't want to keep writing this just the fact it's over there means it's the area of the square this is going to be 34 minus x times 34 minus x over 16. So now I've got to figure out what 34 squared is. 34 squared is 1156. So 34 times 34 is 1156. I want to write it bigger. Eleven fifty six minus thirty four X minus thirty four X negative times negative is plus X times X is X squared plus X squared over sixteen. So I am going to have Keep this going down. 1156 minus 68 X plus X squared over 16. And what have I accomplished there? Well, we'll see, we'll see, have faith, keep going. The worst that will happen is total massive defeat and humiliation. And then you'll wake up tomorrow and everything will be fine. There. So here is the area of the circle, and here is the area of the square. And what I'm looking for, I'm going to have to write it down here, x squared over 4 pi. plus x squared 
minus 68 plus 11.56 over 60. I knew there was no way I could memorize it. So as ugly as that is, we'll do it nicer. But first stop and consider what we need. So here's a break time. It's not really a break time, don't leave. Or if you do have to have a break, just click the screen and this video will automatically pause. OK, and then when you come back, you can click the screen and it'll start. All right, this is what I need because we're being asked to minimize. But the same would be true for maximizing. What we need is this. We need what we need. is a number times x squared plus a number times x, and it'll probably be a minus number, um, plus a number. That is a and b and c so that we can say h equals negative b over 2a. And from there, we can find k, which will be the minimum area. So presumably this quadratic term will be positive, so that we'll have a cupped up parabola, so that our vertex will be a minimum. All right, now this is the strategy. So I have to look at this and start thinking to myself, how do I isolate my X squared? How do I, how do I merge, merge, combine? That's better. How do I combine my X squared terms? How do I get a separate X term? And how do I get a separate constant term? OK, so we are going to do the following. X squared over 4 pi plus X squared over 16 minus 68 x over 16 plus 1156 over 16. Okay. So here are my x squared terms. I need to work on getting them together into one term so that I can look at the number in front. And then there's this. Let's see if 16 will go into 68. So I'm going to clear. 68 divided by 16. I mean, I know 2 will go in. No, it won't, or I wouldn't have a decimal. So let's see if 4 will go into 68 and 16. 68 divided by 4. What do you know? And we know that 4 will go into 16. So uh, let's go back here. And we now know that 68 equals 4 times 17, and 16 equals 4 times 4. 
so we can cancel the fours. And that will leave, ah, my goodness, how strange. And that will leave us 17 over four times X. Now, what about 1156? Let's do the same thing. 1156. Let's see if 16 will go into it. No, it won't, not evenly. So 1156 divided by four. 289. Okay, so this is going to be four times 289. And this is going to be four times four. And the fours will cancel. So now let's rewrite this. And I'm going to do something else. Am I going to do it now? No. I'll do it next time. Um, next, next line. Okay. Um, all right, so x squared over 4 pi plus x squared over 16. Be thinking of getting an LCD for these. Minus 17 over 4 times x. Actually, let's be pure. How long has it been since you've been pure? I'm going to be pure. This is minus 17 over 4. I am going to erase that, put it closer to 17 over 4, Include it in parentheses, and we're going to put a plus here. And then plus 289 over 4. Now we have our B and our C. The only thing we don't have yet is this. Okay, so we now are going to work on this term separately because it's going to be a little more difficult to get together. So here we go. X squared over four pi is the exact same thing as one over four pi times X squared. And pi squared, uh, x squared over 16 is the same thing as 1 16th times x squared. Now I have a common factor I can pull out, can't I? So this is going to be 1 over 4 pi plus 1 over 16 times x squared. Now we have to get 1 over 4 pi and 1 over 16 together, which means I need an LCD. Maybe I don't want an LCD, but, what, but I'm going to get an LCD. Okay. So, <clears throat> Um, stop and think for a minute. I need more room. It, four goes into 16. These two, <clears throat> these two denominators would be exactly the same if C 
16 had a pi, and 4 pi were multiplied by 4. Well, I can do that if, if, now watch. This is how you build an LCD. You say, how can I make those be the same? Well, if I multiply 1 over 4 pi by 4 over 4, I'll have 4 times 4 is 16 pi. Yeah, but this doesn't have a pi. But I can multiply by 1, like 1 over here. I multiplied 1 over 4 pi by 1 in the form of 4 over 4. I'm going to multiply 1 over 16 by 1 in the form of pi over pi. And what is that going to do for me? This is what it's going to do for me. I'll have 4 over 16 pi plus 1 times pi over 16 pi. Now that they have the same denominator, whoop, okay, now that they have the same denominator, all I have to do is write the denominator once and add the numerators for plus pi. That is so beautiful. That isn't. OK, so now. My trials are over. I'm about to move to a new page, but I now know that this. Is this. And so without further ado, we will have our A, B and C. What we're going to have is the sum of the areas. Is. 4 plus pi. Over 16 pi. Times X squared. Plus negative 17 fourths. Times X. Plus 289 over 4. Is that 17 really there? Yeah, it is. All right. So that A is 4 plus pi over 16 pi. And B is negative 17 fourths. And H is negative B over 2A, which is going to be negative, negative 17 fourths over 4 plus pi over 16 pi. 
Piece of cake, right? Two B, two A, two A. There you go. <sighs> All right, well, I'm nowhere near done, of course. Please notice that negative times negative is going to be positive, but there's another way to write this. That's a little bit easier. 17 fourths, because negative times negative is positive, divided by two times four plus pi over 16 pi. So that two goes into 16 eight times. I must add a new page. Goodness, this problem is going on and on. Well, I didn't have lines. I wrote big. Um, 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 here. And I'm going to go to page manipulation and insert one page after page eight. Okay. There we go. Now, where I left off, 17 fourths divided by, now we're going to have four plus pi over eight pi. Because two canceled the two in the 16, leaving eight. Now remember that when you divide fractions, you turn the problem into multiplication. And what you multiply by is the reciprocal of the second fraction. So this will be eight pi over four plus pi. And I wanna put parentheses around that. Now, the first thing I notice, always looking to make my numbers as small as possible, is that four will go into eight two times, and two times 17 is 34. So I will have 34 pi over four plus pi. And this is what H should equal. Actually, not H, it's what X equals, which could be H. Let's go see. Let's go back to the first page of this problem. Okay, okay. Now, yeah, here we are. Okay, now we're trying to find X. What is the X? How should the string be cut so that the sum of the areas is a minimum? They're not asking for the actual minimum sum. They're just asking for how the string should be cut. So they're asking for X. H is what X needs to be in order to minimize the sum of the areas. So X. That's going to be what X needs to be, which is precisely what H is. So, that's what X is. But what about, that is, that's what, that's what this is. This is going to be, let's make it bigger. Is it 34 pi 
over 4 plus pi. Is that what it is? Thirty four pi over four plus pi. Now all we have to do is find thirty four minus x. Well, that's going to be thirty four minus this. So let's go ahead and beat it out. Thirty four minus x. Okay, so now, 34 minus x is going to be 34 minus 34 pi over 4 plus pi. Okay, so this is going to be, this, this denominator is one. What I need to do is multiply 34 over one by four plus pi over four plus pi so that these will have the same denominator 34 pi over 4 plus pi okay now what is this going to do for me this is going to give me 34 times 4 plus pi minus 34 pi over 4 plus pi times 1. I skipped a step and I shouldn't do that. So uh, I'm going to go back and get rid of this step and take it one step at a time to make sure as many people as possible will follow what I'm doing. I'm going to take the... Uh -huh. I'm going to take 4 plus pi over 4 plus pi. Okay, I, I'm going to multiply the tops together, the numerators and the bottoms together, the denominators. So I will have 34 times 4 plus pi. 4 plus pi. Whoa. Well, I made that too big, too small, didn't I? All right, well, I'll erase it all later. Let's say 34 times 4 plus pi over 4 plus pi minus 34 pi. I'm almost done, so just try to hang in there. 4 plus pi. Okay, well, this will be 34 times 4 plus 34 times pi. 34 times 4. 34 times 4. 16, 136. 136 plus 34 pi over 4 plus pi minus 34 pi over 4 plus pi. 
these guys have the same denominator, so they can be combined. We'll have 136 plus 34 pi minus 34 pi over 4 plus pi. 34 pi minus 34 pi is zero. So the answer to this is 136 over 4 plus pi. Yeah. It's right. I was sure I had that one wrong. All right, 136. This piece of string is 136 over 4 plus pi. Notice, notice the instructions say type an exact answer. which is what we have here. What we have here. Woo! This is worthy of an excellent break. All right, you now have your homework. Go to it. Bye-bye.